Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna share 10 boho jewelry design ideas that you can mix and match and make in minutes. Boho style jewelry is wonderful. It's casual enough you can wear to the beach, but it can be elegant and demure enough to even wear to work. And today I'm gonna show you 10 designs you can make right now. I'll be using beautiful, high quality beading supplies from our sponsor, Antelope Beads. If you've never shopped a actual bead store before, you're going to be amazed at the quality and selection you find and surprised that it won't set you back any more than a trip to the big box store. Shopping this amazing variety of beads and supplies can be over overwhelming, but a trip to Antelope Beads Design Idea Gallery and Learning Center will give you all the inspiration you need, plus clear step-by-step -step instructions and a shopping list so you can add the supplies you want to your cart right there. They have taken the guesswork and difficulty out of creating beautiful handmade jewelry. Visit antelopebeads.com to find the supplies for your next beading project and be sure to use the coupon code BOHO20 to save 20% off your next order and orders over $50 get free shipping. Now let's go make some boho jewelry. The thing I love about boho jewelry is that you can mix and match a bunch of eclectic elements and make something new. I was really inspired by this kind of um, uh, wonky ring element and I thought it would be a really fun focal point for a bracelet. It's nice and flat and I thought it would be fun to kind of uh, put something on the inside. Now you can see on the right hand side of this bracelet I've already got one half done so what I'm showing you here is just a repeat of that so you'll basically do that twice. So I took a piece of cording that was about 10 inches long and folded it in half, I threaded it through the ring, and then I just tied it with an overhand knot to keep it nice and secure. Plus the knot adds a nice decorative touch. Now what I'm gonna do here is take a piece of wire that's about four inches long, and I'm gonna thread it through a, a jadeite type bead. It's just kind of like a matte, uh, lovely stone here. And then I'm making a little right angle bend right next to the bead, and that's gonna kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna make a loop here, a wrapped loop, and I'm just going to pull it around one of my pliers to get a nice round loop and then I am going to put it on the other um, the other nose of the plier and then wrap the tail around and that's why you want a little more wire than you need because it really helps to be able to wrap those nice, nice neat tight loops by your finger. Then I did the same exact thing from the other side. So I had a bead with a wrapped loop on each end. And I like the wrapped loop on a bracelet because it's just a little bit more strong rather than a simple loop that could pull apart if there's a lot of wear and tear or um, movement on the piece. And then I'm just threading the leather through that little diamond frame, then through the loops on the side of the bead and then back through the frame again. So it's the extension of those two wrap loops over the edge of the diamond frame that's holding it in, that and the leather. I think that's a really cool um, effect and then you get that kind of a juxtaposition of the uh, organic and inorganic materials together and it just looks really cool when you have it something kind of haphazard and eclectic but you put it together in a symmetrical way on a bracelet I think it looks really cool so we're going to do a very similar thing here to put this uh, natural stone bead in the center I thought this would be a nice focal point and um there's just enough room inside of that uh, oval to frame it. And I'm going to be using the silver wire to actually um, kind of attach it to the edges. I want to make sure it's going to be nice and strong. But I essentially did the exact same thing, except I formed the loop around the edge of that oval frame rather than doing it on my pliers. So same technique, just done a little differently. Now for the base of this bracelet, I wanted to use a leather strap because I figured that if I was had a bunch of like different pieces like that they would kind of twist around and not look great all the time so I knew having a strap underneath was going to make it much more um much more appealing and keep it nice and stable. And also it would give me a, another option for decoration. So I determined how long I was gonna need it for my wrist and you need to measure your own wrist. I have very small wrists, so go ahead and measure your own. And then I just use binder clips to kind of hold everything in place because when you have all these different elements, they wanna kind of wiggle and wobble around on you. And then I'm gonna poke just a few little holes in the leather strap so I can use some fine wire just to kind of it's it's a decoration but it's also going to tack down this top um, element to the strap so I'm using just a needle tool for this you could use um, 
a, a, a thin awl or anything like that that makes a fine hole. And I'm just using some um, artistic wire, which is a copper wire that's got like a coating, a colored coating on it in this teal color to uh, decoratively tack all of these elements down. I think it's really fun just to kind of weave in and out. I try to just keep repeating whatever I'm doing, whatever technique I'm doing, like go like over the um, the silver and then go under the silver. You just kind of go back and forth, weave it the same way basically is what I'm trying to say. If you, if you repeat the same step, it's going to look a little bit more put together than if you just randomly wrap it around. And, but that could look cool too. So do whatever you think looks best. Just try not to wrap and unwrap your wire because it makes it weak and then it could snap. Continue working down the bracelet, tacking down elements so that they'll be securely held to the strap and it also adds a little bit of sparkle. After you're done that, you're simply going to trim your cords all to the same length and then attach them to the clasp with a little super glue. And I'll link to that special super glue in the video description and it's nice and neat and tidy. Another handy glue to have would be one that is a little bit thicker and flexible like an E6000 or another epoxy type of glue when part epoxy and you're going to want that for a cuff style bracelet like this because the bracelet would flex a bit as you put it on and take it off your wrist. And this bracelet is really neat. It's a blank silver cuff that you can put a variety of cords, ribbons, or straps in. All you got to do is choose your material, cut it to length, and glue it in. So you want that thick glue because it's strong and because it's going to flex with you. Now once you have cut your material and put it in the bracelet, you just want to clamp it down with some tape. And I also like to uh, just reinforce it with some binder clips and then just let it dry. I like to give it overnight to dry and then you are fine to wear it and it's not going to come off on you. This next set was so fun to make and wear. I wore this in the intro and I just really love these pendants. They have a bunch of faceted cuts on the, um, on the pendant itself so it catches a light and sparkles and is just gorgeous. I decided to choose the warmer tone pendant. It comes in with gold undertones or with silver undertones and I prefer to wear gold jewelry so I chose the gold pen, the pendant with the gold undertones and then I chose some gold jump rings and some gold wire to be able to um, put it all together. So I'm doing the double wrapped loops just like I did on the bracelet and then I'm using jump rings to attach my beads to these copper discs. And by using jump rings, you're going to have a lot of movement and it's also going to help all of these different elements lie flat against your skin as you're wearing it. So it, it kind of has two features there. So you can move, the necklace is going to move with you, but it's always going to be lying flat and very um, pretty to look at. So kind of keep that in mind as you're designing, how is it going to feel when you wear it? Having almost all of the beads, and discs attached individually is going to help it conform to your body. Now on those side pieces, you're going to see that I have a row of beads. I have um, some stone beads and some flat glass saucer beads. And I decided I wanted to have those, um, those five or six beads kind of stacked together. And the reason I wanted that is because that's going to be on either side of your neck and that's going to keep the, um, I think it's going to keep the necklace a little bit better balanced and weighted. And it's going to keep that part straight and let the the beads move a little more freely underneath and that's a great place to be able to attach it to chain because it's it's a little more stable it's not going to be twisting and moving as much um, I wouldn't do this for more than like say an inch and a half of beads because then it, your necklace could get a lot too uh, a little too stiff and not have enough movement but I just use some wire just like I did with a single bead except I strung on all five of those beads before I made my loops on each end. And again, I'm using jump rings to attach them to the other beads. Once you have all of your beads attached to one another, then you'll want to work on the chain and the clasp. And for the chain, I chose a chain that has um, multiple strands. It has one strand of larger ovals, and then it's got these thinner strands, um, like three thinner strands in between. I thought it was really pretty. Again, it had a lot of movement, and also I love the almost tassel-like elements. So I used a jump ring to attach the uh, chain on either side. And then I'm simply going to add a clasp. And I used a lobster claw clasp because it's very elegant, small, and easy to attach, easy to put on if you're wearing it. So that's what I did for that. You know, I'm gonna turn my beadboard around just so you can kind of see how I lay it out. You wanna make sure that uh, you have something to work on where your supplies aren't gonna roll away. So a beadboard or a piece of felt or fabric or a towel, anything like that is gonna really help you um, 
keep your beads and supplies from taking a little adventure on you when you're trying to do your beading. Again, I'm using a simple jump ring to attach the clasp and I'm using one of the larger chains on the other side as an adjustable way to attach it. And I left the um, like one of the bits of the triple chain loose to dangle behind because I like that tassel effect. Now the other cool thing about having a tassel effect like that is that um, you can use that same motif on some earrings. So for my earrings here, again, I strung on some beads and made a wrapped loop and um, I'm simply adding a piece of chain to that. That's all there is to it. And then all you have to do is slide on that little, uh, that little, pretty much a little charm you made onto an ear wire and that's how you make a pair of earrings. It's very simple. Uh, there's different types of ear wires depending on what you like, how dangly you like them. But I really like this style of earring with a little dangle because it's lightweight, the, the chain is super light, it's sparkly and it has a lot of movement just like your necklace does. But I don't feel like it's over the top if you wear both pieces together. The um, style of ear hooks I'm using here are called French wires. They're very simple and um, just make sure you close them before you store them in your jewelry box so you don't lose any of the pieces and there's that. A really fun tip is if you have little bits of chain left over from jewelry projects that are kind of too small for anything else, use them for earrings because they're perfect for a little tassel dangle and they're so pretty. And I actually just had a, enough chain left over to do a bracelet. And again, it's very dainty and elegant. You could totally wear this to work. And you're using up a scrap, basically, that would be too small for anything else. I simply added a clasp on here, and um, you're gonna have a very simple little bracelet. You can add charms if you want to to this. You can, if you don't like the, the tassel, you could definitely clip that off. Uh, but I think it just looks so nice. And um, there's definitely a lot of ways you could personalize it or just leave it simple. Here I'm gonna show you how I added a little a, ta a little charm to the dangle there just because I thought it needed a little something to dress it up because I like to have a little bit of funky eclecticness to my jewelry and I just added that on to the chain with a jump ring. You see a theme here? Add it on with a jump ring. You know, <laughs> when in doubt, use a jump ring and add it on and your boho jewelry will look fabulous. Now this set was also really fun to make. I loved how the beads appear to float around the center strap and we do that just with some slider beads and some cord. So I started off by cutting my cord and my straps to size and I put a really sparkly fun slider bead down the middle. Now this slider bead is meant for a wider strap of leather so I used a thinner strap of leather and two cords and then I strung red beads on either side and then I pulled another spacer up to kind of keep those beads in place and also add a decorative touch and then I added on two beads on each cord so um, or bead on each cord on each side so four beads <laughs> but on their own and then um, I added on another slider to keep them in place so you kind of almost have this magical hovering effect where the beads are held up next to the middle strap but everything's staying in place because those slider beads are so stable that they keep everything from kind of slipping underneath and I actually wore this bracelet uh, one day and everything stayed just fine and it just looked fantastic from every angle. And those are the type of jewelry designs I like because it can look a little happenstance, but it's actually, you know, really secure. And again, I use that super glue to glue my cord and, cla and uh, clasp together. A quick tip for when you're gluing your cords into your magnetic clasp is to put the super glue in the metal part and then push the cords or straps inward into the cavity. And if they don't want to go, then pinch them with some flat nose pliers and that will compress the leather so that it will fit within the cavity of your clasp. It will work really good and it's actually very, very secure. The matching earrings are super easy to make. All you need to do is cut some of this feather chain to equal lengths. I cut them to an inch and a half. And then you're gonna take a piece of two inch wire and make a loop and then attach the chain by one of the loops. Slide on a bead and then make a wrapped loop at the top. And that's how you make your charm for your earrings. So you just need to make two of those. And then you're simply going to attach it to an ear wire. Again, use the ear wire you like best. These simple little fish hooks 
style earrings I think work so well with so many different designs because they're not too flashy and they go with pretty much everything so it's a nice supply to have on hand. Simply twist your loop on the ear wire just like you open jump rings to attach your charm and then twist it closed. You want to make sure you always twist and you don't pull it open like a U. You want to twist it like a C and there you go you have a really cute earrings to match your bracelet and they're lightweight and really easy to wear. To make this next bracelet, take three cords and glue them into the end of a magnetic clasp and then slide beads on the end of the cords. And then you're simply going to braid the three cords together and pull up a bead on like every third round. And then you have a beautiful beaded bracelet and then you simply have to trim the cords equal length on the opposite end because they're probably going to, you know, be a little bit different after you've braided them, plus they'll be a little too long. And then you are going to glue them in the other end of your magnetic clasp using your super glue. I really think these magnetic clasps add such a tidy, elegant closure to these bracelets and these other boho jewelry designs. It just makes everything look so neat and tidy. For this other bracelet design here, this is another really simple one. You're going to start off by trimming your leather strap to fit your wrist. Remember, your clasp is going to add about an extra you know, half inch to three quarters of an inch there. And you want to line up your spacer beads the way you want to put them on your bracelet. Then take your magnetic clasp and you want to glue it on to one end using super glue. Then you're going to slide on your slider beads in the order you've arranged them. You don't need to worry about their spacing yet. Just get them all on the strap and then you're going to glue the other end of your strap into the magnetic clasp and you can do it with the clasps together or you can pull them apart. I kind of like to do, it with, do them together so I know I don't glue it backwards and then have a twist in my bracelet because once you've super glued it it's in there really well. If you get too much glue and it squirts out just take a little uh, rag and wipe off the excess. Now you want to lay your spacer bead or your slider beads out the way you want them and once you have them just so put a little drop of glue on the leather and slide the bead into it. That way you can have it kind of um, sit exactly where you want it. So you put the little drop down and then you slide the bead over and that will just kind of tack it in place. So um, there you have this lovely elegant bracelet. I think this would go good any day of the week. You could wear that to work or whatever you like. This bracelet here is fun. This is a stretch bracelet and these are really great for kids or people that have a hard time doing clasps. The magnetic clasps are really great, but they can still be really strong and hard to take off because they're so secure. So a stretch bracelet works really well. Again, I like to use my binder clips to kind of hold the end of my, uh, my stretch cord so my beads don't go flying. So that's a, another really great use for that. You can purchase a little thing called a bead bug that will hold your beads on there, but a binder clip works really well. Once you've determined how many beads you're going to need to go around your wrist, you'll be able to tie off your bracelet. But try it on. Kind of try it on like that. You don't want to have to stretch it when you're trying it on like that. The stretching only comes into play taking it off and on. So once you have got all your beads on there, you are going to tie a knot. And you're actually going to do three square knots according to the instructions on the back of the package of the stretch cord. And I'll link that down below. But the only thing I don't like about that is that it makes a really bulky knot. Um, and it's, I wasn't happy with that. So what I did was I put a spacer bead in there and look how big, it's a nice big hold spacer bead. Then I did my three square knots and I could hide it. I could hide those knots right inside that big hole bead. So um, something you could do if you knew you're going to use a bead like that is you could have some other ones spaced out in the bracelet. But I really love the look of the natural stones, so I didn't do that. And I didn't have a bunch of those left over either, but I would suggest that if you were making this design. So after you've tied your three square knots, put some super glue on the knot, let it dry and trim it short and then shove that knot right into that spa that little spacer bead and look at that you don't see the knot and that little silver bead is kind of pretty i think a project like this is a great first project for kids to do in beading as well because you don't need to use a needle and it really takes some basic supplies and everyone can wear bracelets like this I hope you enjoyed today's 10 jewelry making ideas. I love designing these projects and working with the gorgeous high quality beading supplies from Antelope Beads. If you're a jewelry maker, I encourage you to treat yourself to some of their supplies. Their prices are great and their service is outstanding. 
Don't forget to use coupon code BOHO20 for 20% off your order and orders over 50 ship free. All products I use today will be linked in the video description along with any special deals and coupon codes. I'll also link to Antelope Bead's Idea Gallery, Learning Center, and Facebook group for all the inspiration you can handle. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, happy grafting.